uh-oh, there's no water coming out. It's just a small trickle and then sometimes nothing at all. So that's probably why you're here, right? Because you're stuck with your refrigerator here and your water dispenser in your refrigerator is not dispensing any water. Well, in today's video, we're going to show you one of the most common root causes for you not getting any water out of the dispenser in your refrigerator. We're going to show you how to repair it, and it's actually quite a simple repair that only takes a few minutes, and it all starts right now. Jeff here, welcome back to our channel, where we give you all sorts of world-class remodeling tips for remodeling your kitchens, your bathrooms, all sorts of projects around your house, engineering disasters and repairs, and today we're doing this repair here. But if you haven't subscribed to us yet, make sure you do that right now while it's fresh on your mind. Just click on that subscribe button down below, and then after you do that, click on the gray icon next to it. That way you'll never miss one of our videos, because if you want to up your game on fixing things around your house and remodeling, you definitely don't want to miss one of our videos. So let's start right in. Okay, so there are five possible root causes for why the water dispenser in your refrigerator is not dispensing any water. And here they are. Number one, the first reason could be your water filter is clogged. Root cause number two, it could be your water button itself. Root cause number three, it could be the water reservoir. Okay, so that now leads us to problem number four. And this is your water inlet valve. But we are assuming here today that you have already ruled out the other root causes. You, you've already ruled out that you don't have a bad pressure switch here. You've already ruled out that you don't have a bad water inlet valve. And we'll show you how to do that test after we make the repair here. We we're here basically for the main repair that we're going to repair here. But we're going to show you how to test your water inlet valve as well to see if it's bad. Okay, so we're going to assume you've done that and there's nothing wrong with your water inlet valve. We're also going to assume that you've already checked that little water reservoir. Now, in most of the refrigerators, it's going to be behind the crisper drawers. So if you take out the crisper drawer like this, so you see way in the back here, you have this water reservoir. Well, that, that sometimes freezes over. This is one of the most common reasons why you have no water flowing. But in this case here, we know it's not frozen over. So what a lot of people will do to fix this problem here is they'll take a, a hot air dryer and they'll just blow hot air on it until the water melts and then, because it, it keeps the water from going through the tube here. Okay, so you've already ruled that out. That's not your problem. So now we're going to focus on what really is the root cause here. Okay, so now we direct our attention up here to where the filter is. And usually on the refrigerators like this here, your filter is going to be right here and you just twist it off and change it. But if you change your filter every year, that's not your problem. What is the problem is what is something that most people don't even think about looking at. Okay, so I'll use a cloth here at the bottom and I'll just twist it out. Okay, and so what happens here is this is what we call the filter head. And this is the part that we're going to change here because this has gone bad today. Why did it go bad? Because there's like a bladder or a gasket or something in here that when these two white pieces of plastic that you see there, when those two get pushed in, it allows the water to flow. So something's happening in there and it's not allowing the water to flow. Okay, so now the filter head attaches with two hoses that run down the back of the refrigerator. So we're going to have to roll out the refrigerator this way and get to the back of it and undo the two hoses and put the new part in. Okay, so this is what your new filter head looks like when it comes out of the bag. So this is the part we were just looking into where the filter plugs into here, right? And then the other end of it is your two hoses here, okay? And so one of the hoses has the, the screw-on part, and this one here will plug into like a little compression fitting. But what we want to focus our attention on right now here is the business end of this filter head. Now, something very important here, this blue piece of plastic that you see right here. All right, so this is called a bypass cap. This is not just a cap. This is not a protective cap that they send you in shipping. Uh, this is a very useful tool to have, so make sure you do not throw this piece of blue plastic out. This is a bypass, so if you ever wanted to test whether the problem was your filter or not, you would use this bypass. You'll screw this in place just like you see it now, and the water will come in 
through one hose and out the other and continue in the cycle. So it's like you're bypassing the filter. So when we go to hook it up in there and connect the filter, we will take off this piece of plastic like that. And that reveals the mating part of the, looks like the International Space Station there when you're docking on it. Okay, so you can see these two little plastic features sticking out. See that little white nub right there? And there's also another one here on the bottom as well. See, there's two of them there. And what happens is those get pushed in, and I guess they move the bladder or whatever it is out of the way inside there so that water can now flow. So I guess it wears down over time, and, that, and that's the problem here with these water filter heads here. So that's why this head has to get changed out. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And one other thing too here, by the way, I have a temporary fix for you, just in case you have to wait in order another uh, one of your filter heads here for your refrigerator. If you have to wait for your refrigerator filter head to be delivered to you, what I'm going to do is come up with a little fix here for you that will help you out temporarily. Sometimes it works for a day or two, sometimes it, it works just for a few times, but we're going to get a garden hose gasket and stick it in here and that will help and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so here's your temporary fix. So you take here a regular orange gasket here, or black gasket, from your garden hose, just get a new one. You stick it right on the ring, right there. So it will provide the pressure against those two white features there. And then we'll t plug the filter back on. Okay, so now let's see if our ingenious trick of the century worked. Yeah, you see that? So this will buy you some time here until your part arrives if you have to order one. See it's sputtering a little bit there, but it will work. All right, so now we have to pull out the refrigerator. Cover me, I'm going in. Okay, so the next thing we have to do now is turn off that water and it's under the sink here. So there's a water supply that feeds the back of this refrigerator here. And you never, ever, ever want to start working on the water supply in the back of the refrigerator without turning off that water first. Okay, now that the water's cut off, you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver and you're going to need a half inch wrench. Now your size might vary, but they're usually a pretty standard size for those water connections on the back of the refrigerator. Okay, we also need this quarter inch hex nut driver here that you see. And uh, we're going to need this because this is, will help loosen where the hose is strapped to the back of the chassis of the refrigerator. So the water hose is held in place by this little, like a C-clamp, and it's got a hex nut on there that's a quarter of an inch in diameter, so we'll need this to loosen that. Okay, so now looking on the back of the refrigerator here, you can see where the two hoses come out from the back of the filter head there. And they work their way down the refrigerator there. There's a clip there. There's a track there that they clip onto. And then down at the bottom, they, they fit into the little housing there. We'll show you close up here in a second. But just wanted to give you the general overview of what has to happen here. So once we get those out there and we have to pull that little styrofoam block right there, that's, that's the insulator that that, so that when the hoses go into the refrigerator there, that whole space there gets blocked off and insulated so that the cold air doesn't escape. That is a must. You must put that back on afterwards. Do not forget this part. This is a very important part. Okay, so the full, first thing we're going to do is pull both of the gray hoses out of the lock, that little locking track there, see? So now they're out and they're loose. Now let's tackle the bottom. So before you start, you wanna make sure you have a bowl here to catch any water that might come out. So I'm using my rigid wrench here to loosen the nut, and then the other nut we have to hold steady. So there's gonna be a little bit of water that comes out. Like this. Okay, so we're taking the copper hose off here and putting it into the bucket. Okay, now you take your flathead screwdriver and on the left hand side of this plastic piece here, you just kind of pop it out of there, see? Pops right off. Okay, so before we can pop this thing out here, we have to loosen this nut right here. See this? That's what's 
holding that retaining strap there in a place. So all we got to do is loosen that. Now we pull this hose out by pushing down on this blue disc right there. So that will loosen it once you push it all the way down, then you can pull the hose out. Now it really goes a lot easier when you use the wrench to just push it down, see, like that. And let any water drain into the bucket. Okay, so both of the hoses are detached now. So now we turn our attention back up to the top here where we can pull out this plug. Remember, this is our insulating styrofoam plug here. We'll just pull him out and set him right there. And now we can pull everything out through the front side of the refrigerator. Okay, so now on the front side of the fridge here, we're gonna pull the filter out with the hoses right out of the refrigerator here. Um, so the first thing I like to do is you gotta pull the cap off, the protective cap, and then feed them right through. Okay, now to put the filter head in, the right side goes on the loop on the right side. And then the left side, make sure you have it correct. Now there's a level place here, horizontal on the bottom of that peg. And that's what snaps up into the snap, see? So now the filter head is in place. And you just insert in the new water filter. Okay, once the filter's in, then you snap the door closed and that part's installed. Of course, these things break so easily, but it's okay. This part isn't the part that's actually plugging the hole, but we can still glue that back together. So now your hoses just come downward. Okay, so now we just snap the hoses back into the track there. There's the first one in. And then the second one. Well, you can see the problem we have here is that the hose here that has our brass connector on it, they didn't make the hose long enough. And this is the official Whirlpool part here, so we don't know what's wrong here. This hose is not the same length as the other one, so it kinks right here. So when putting it back onto the, onto the bracket there, it's, it's going to make it kink. So in our particular case, we can't put that hose back. We have to leave it off and kind of out a little bit. And that's okay, that's not a problem. But the other holes will still go into its normal spot. Okay, now you remember this black retaining clip there with that hex nut? We removed it before. So now we took that clip off of the old hose because the new one doesn't come with one. And you just simply screw it right back into place again. Don't tighten it all the way, just a little bit, just to hold it snug into place for a minute because now you want to slide the hose down and put it into the receptacle there. Okay, now let's see if our repair was successful. There you have it, that solved our problem. Okay, so now we're going to test out with the plug here. I just want to show you how this works. So what you do is you come in here, you can pop the lid, twist off the filter, and then this, the plug, Okay, so what this is doing now is this is bypassing the filter. So it's just basically taking the water in one side and sending it back the other. Let's check it and make sure it works. And you can see it still works. No problems. Make sure you put this someplace safe where you know you will always be able to find it. Okay, so now to test your 
water inlet valves here you want to put your digital voltmeter here you want to set it to ohms right here because we're measuring resistance we want to measure continuity from one lead of each of the solenoid to the other lead here so we kind of go like this and see how the the meter changes and it shows 183 ohms here on one of them so that means it's pretty good you want to see something in the couple of hundred ohms range and depending on what type of solenoid valve you have it could be anywhere up to 500 or even 1500 ohms but the thing is you don't want to see this see how it says OL on it which means there's infinite resistance so that means you have no connection uh, this one here measures about 185 or so ohms and then the other one here is going to be a little bit different he'll measure it about 250 or so ohms 250 to 60 this is how you test it. This particular one tests okay. Let's test one that doesn't work out okay. Okay, so now here we have one that we know to be bad. So let's check the first two leads here. Okay, that comes in good, about 183 ohms. Let's check the second one now. And you can see how when I put my uh, other lead on here, look at the screen there on my mul multimeter. So apparently we're not getting continuity on this particular one. So that means it's bad. And you don't want to try to change or fix individual solenoids here. You're a lot better off just putting in a whole new unit. And these can cost anywhere from 30 to 40, 50 bucks, depending on who you buy it from. Well, we hope you're finding this video useful so far. And if you are, go ahead and smash that like button down below there. Just click on that thumbs up icon there. That tells us that you like us, and it also lets YouTube rank our videos even better as well. And by the way, if you want to up your game on home repairs and home remodeling and see more tool reviews and shop with me at Home Depot and Costco and Sam's and Lowe's, make sure you go ahead and click on that subscribe button down below there. And be sure to click the little gray bell icon, because that way you'll be notified whenever we upload more of these videos for you. So that's it for this week, folks, and we'll see you on the next one.